How's it going everybody? You're watching Visual Intelligence and welcome back to another very exciting um, Affinity Designer tutorial. So in this tutorial I will be showing you guys how to create this logo effect um, or this kind of style of a logo uh, where it's uh, minimalistic but also features some gradients and nice colors. Um, so our output is not going to be exactly this, um, it's probably going to be something slightly different in terms of colors because I like to pick the colors as, as I go and, and kind of uh, try to you know communicate my uh, thought process when it comes to picking colors. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is control N to create a new document. So for my purposes, I want uh, 124 by 124 points or pixels. Uh, the size doesn't really matter since, it, since this is a vectors um, editing software. So feel free to pick whatever uh, size you are most comfortable with. Let's go ahead and hit create. All right, so to begin, let's start with creating a, a small grid with rectangles. So I hit M on my keyboard or you can go to your rectangle tool. And then you want to dra uh, drag and drop to create a um, an arbitrary rectangle. Uh, if you hold shift, it will create a perfect square, which is what we want. Um, and you can uh, uh, release to create the shape. So by default, it gives you this color. If you hit D, it will give you a black outline with a white fill, uh, which is more visible for me. We click away you can see uh, this is the shape we just created uh, so let's go ahead and duplicate that in order to do that we want to hold command and then drag I believe it's alt on Windows and then you want to hold shift as you drag in order to keep the same X position so now that we duplicate it uh, once you can hit command J or control J on Windows in order to duplicate again multiple times and you can keep doing that until you have a, uh, a good a good amount of uh, of squares so let's let's do the same thing on the um, on the other axis let's uh, select all of the squares click and drag uh, and then make sure to hit alt and shift as you drag in order to duplicate and then once you duplicate once you can go back and say um, command J and this will uh, duplicate again and again all right so now that you have this uh, very nice square grid uh, you want to select everything and then command J to group. So once you do that, uh, you now want to go m to your uh, color panel. You can see you have the fill and um, the stroke. You want to go to the stroke. You want to select some uh, some dark color, and then you want to decrease the opacity quite a bit. And as you can see, this will uh, this will make it um, visible uh, quite a bit, but. Uh, it will not be too, too distracting once we started making our logo. All right, so we don't really need to do anything with this grid, so let's hit Command L in order to lock it, and this way we will not be able to select it, which is good. Um, let's zoom in a bit, and then uh, you can hit Command plus or minus to zoom in. I'm using uh, my uh, touchpad, and, and this is how I uh, zoom in and out. Uh, this is one thing I like really about Affinity Designer is how smooth it is and how you can you know zoom in out and all of that stuff really instantly, uh, which is a, a plus um, versus you know software like Adobe Illustrator where they have all those um, you know huge features that they take up a lot of memory and space and it's not really optimized for my kind of use. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I'm using Affinity Designer. So what you want to do now is you want to hit P to select the pen tool, and then once you have that, you can uh, you see how um, it kind of snaps uh, on the on the on the grid, which is uh, really what we want. Um, and this is why kind of why we created the grid in the first place. So let's go ahead and uh, click once on uh, some arbitrary point, and then you want to move up um, maybe three um, three squares, and then you want to click again. Move to the right one square, click, and then uh, two squares down, and then click, two squares to the right, and then click, and uh, one square down, and then you want to close your shape. So what we did here is we created this uh, this L shape. So if I select it and hit D again on my keyboard, it will give it the default fill and color, uh, and then we want to increase the opacity maybe of the 
of this stroke so that we can see our shape clearly. So now I want to hit A on our keyboard to bring up the node tool. We want to select this node right here. And then we want to hold shift to select multiple nodes. We want to um, select this one. While keeping shift hold held, um, you want to select the last point as well. And then you want to hit C on your keyboard and then you want to round the these edges. And this is kind of the, the shape that we got. So now let's select our shape. We want to hit command while dragging to the, uh, command and then while we drag we hold shift um, until we move it one square to the right and then once we have that we can release select both shapes and then go to our kind of like pathfinding options and then we hit divide so now you can see that these are only the only two shapes that we're interested in so let's go ahead and um, delete the other shapes that we're not interested in so now that we have this shape we're not really interested in the uh, grid anymore so let's go ahead and delete it if you try to just select it you can't because it's locked so a way to unlock it is to hit command Control l and it will unlock the shape and then you can simply hit delete to delete it let's go ahead and select our shape and then let's um, hover over the corner of the shape or the boundary of the shape and then we want to rotate 45 degrees um, if you, hold, if you hold shift it will give you nice angles um, and we can release at 45 degrees that looks good so let's go ahead and, uh, uh, and do the other side uh, in or, and in order to do that we can just simply uh, uh, hold alt while dragging and dropping this shape and then it will duplicate it and then we want to flip horizontally in order to get the um, kind of the, the reflection of the shape and then we want uh, we want these two points on the top to uh, overlap so in order to do that we can select the first shape and then hit A and then select every point in this shape and then if we drag and drop like this you can uh, see how um, Affinity Designer is going to help us align um, our shapes uh, or our uh, points as you can see All right. So this is where I realized that um, it's slightly different than uh, what I have here because it's uh, it's rotated 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and fix that by rotating um, another 180 degrees, and this way we have this shape. and And now we can simply delete this one part in order to duplicate or to replicate this shape here. All right. So notice how uh, the original shape has some rounding going on in order to make it more modern and friendly um, as opposed to this really pointy and ugly shape I would say um, and in order to fix that we can just simply um, select the corner and then uh, if we hit C on our keyboard we can use the corner tool uh, in order to fix our corners. But the problem is if I select this one corner, notice how it's not going to be uh, moving anywhere and the reason is uh, there is actually two points overlapping here and so it's not really possible to have any rounding with um, two points overlapping. So in order to fix that, uh, let's go back with Control Z and select every shape. And then hit A on our keyboard to go to our direct selection tool or the node tool and it will give us these options so the options that we want to click on is the uh, smooth curve and this will get rid of all of the redundant and overlapping points and now we can select our points that we're interested in around in uh, then we can hit shift or hold shift while selecting all the points that we want to round uh, hit C again to bring the corner tool and Go ahead and uh, round that up, and that looks pretty good. Maybe this is too much of a rounding, so uh, let me try again and have it slightly less rounded. This looks good to me. I mean, it's not not super rounded, but at the same time, it's not like a really sharp and you know um, edgy. I would say. Uh, all right, so now that we got our shape figured out, let's go ahead and uh, have some colors. So let's select all of the shapes and uh, remove the cor or the border color or the outline. 
uh, stroke, whatever you want to call it. And then we want to go to our direct selection tool or A and it will give us the option to select a gradient fill. So for whatever reason I have a gradient from white to white so let's go ahead and change that first in order to be able to visualize the gradient. So this is kind of our gradient. Uh, I notice how this already looks really cool. Um, you can uh, have it represent a um, um, I don't know a, a rose or some kind of a uh, flower company so to speak and you can do all sorts of stuff with that uh, but let's go ahead and, and try to achieve the same kind of uh, gradients uh, as we did before let's select this side maybe have it slightly orangish by increasing the yellow and, and the magenta so what I want is really just an orange color. Uh, we can play, can play with the colors in order to replicate that. For the other side, we want to have a more of a red um, magenta sort of color. Um, so let's try to achieve that style. That looks pretty good, I would say. All right. Notice how this one, uh, in particular, is not does not look really good because most of the gradient is uh, is in this side, uh, or only part of the gradient covers this shape. So if we hit if we select this shape and then we hit G on our keyboard, you can see uh, the gradient and then you can play with it or you can draw a completely new one. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and. Uh, uh, maybe uh, change the color of um, one uh, one of the shapes. Uh, select this one, for example, since it's the the uh, one uh, that is uh, on the topmost layer. And let's go ahead and maybe change the yellow to be um, some kind of blue, or you know kind of blue or purple uh, or something like that so let's go ahead and change the uh, gradient a little bit um, and as you can see this uh, this is too blue for our purposes so maybe we, we want to have it uh, more in the red more magenta than anything else really all right I think that looks pretty good. I will include the uh, project file in the description. If you guys want to just copy the colors, um, you can do that, obviously. Uh, and I am just now, right now, playing with the gradients and seeing how they look. Um, I think this looks pretty good. Um, so if we select everything, hit Command G to group the shape. And then we want to maybe um, center it with our canvas or artboard. Uh, we want to make it slightly bigger so that we uh, we can see what's going on. Maybe uh, push it to the top a little bit so that we have some space for text. So let's say T on our keyboard to bring up the type tool and then let's click once to start typing. Um, before you start typing you want to select the um, center align. Uh, maybe you want to also while you're here increase the size say 48 for example and then let's call this logo flame.io the generic name really uh, is this is not for any kind of business let's uh, increase the size of it a little bit oh, that looks good um, and maybe I want to change the um, font so the font I'm using a lot these days is Poppins it's a free font on Google fonts and I'll be linking that in the description below if you want to check that out so one thing I, I, I may want to do is I want to have flame to be bold and maybe I leave the dot IO kind of uh, Kind of regular or thin uh, because it's not really relevant to um, to the name of the product or the imaginary product so to speak all right make sure this is centered and that looks good so by default it's this black color and which uh, which is good but let's go ahead and try something else uh, um, while having the um, the text selected let's hit I on our keyboard to get the drop uh, the color picker tool and then 
maybe let's select this color on the gradient as a starting point and then what we want to do is we want to increase the um, the black value in our um, in our um, color uh, if you don't have the, the CMYK you can just uh, if you have something else like RGB make sure you're on CMYK to get a similar um, color picker on. all right so this looks pretty good to me um, I guess that's pretty much it uh, for this tutorial if you want to experiment you can uh, experiment with different backgrounds you can see how I uh, how I added different types of backgrounds and uh, I changed the uh, I exchanged the, the text versus the the background colors and uh, you can see how that would achieve really cool results um, one thing also you can try is uh, you know building a quick um, quick visual identity for it now uh, you can see how I uh, put the logo here in the in, in a horizontal uh, layout and I, I put the colors that I use or the color palettes you can add some color codes to make it more thorough um, you can add some typography and you can explain your uh, uh, decision-making process and all that um, if, you, if you want tutorials on that just let me know in the comments but um, I guess that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you learned something new or um, if that was useful please leave a like uh, subscribe as well and uh, I will see you guys in the next tutorial